Onslow County today. I'm your host, Lisa Pippen Grice, and we are thrilled to welcome you to our 21st year of producing Onslow County today. We are here today at the Onslow County Museum. Oh, we are excited to say the museum is open and ready to welcome you back. We also have lots of other guests that we'll be talking to about summer programming. We'll be visiting with Sergeant James Seifert with the Onslow County Sheriff's Office. We'll also speak with Melissa Huffman from the Onslow County Cooperative Extension Office, Katie Lemaire from Onslow County Piers, and our team here at the museum, Chance Hellman and Emily Baker, to talk all about Welcome to the Jungle. We are glad to welcome you back to Onslow County today. Welcome back to Onslow County today and joining us now is Sergeant James Seifert with the Onslow County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff's, Sheriff's Office. Sheriff's Office. Wonderful. We are so glad to have you here, sir. Um, you and I got acquainted way back in November when we were working on our Veterans Memorial event and our public safety event. Mm -hmm. And from that, we've just gotten a chance to work together many times now over the last few months. And you sent me a great email about a new project you have. Um, tell us about Operation Jumpstart and the Onslow County Sheriff's Office goal for this cool new program you're doing for our youth. Well, the Onslow County Sheriff's Office is putting on something called Operation Jumpstart, like you said, and it is to bridge the gap, and that is our theme, to bridge the gap with law enforcement, our youth, and our community. Since COVID has kind of locked us down this past year, yeah. I believe this was a very important thing to have in our county. So COVID has had us locked down and we've not had that sense of connection. Young people have been out of school. They've not been able to participate in sports in the same way. Right. And now as we're all sort of emerging from this and, and getting back to um, what we knew pre-COVID in terms of activities, you all now have brought us something to, to give those young people a sense of of connection that they might have lost. Um, talk about where this sort of came from, Sergeant Seifert. So we were looking at trying to figure out what does this community need post pandemic wise? And I said, well, why don't we get our community together at Onslow County Parks and Rec every so often and do just some fun activities, get out there, be out of uniform and just be an individual and have fun with these kids. What a great place to, to do that in, in a partnership with Park and Recreation where oftentimes we know now that kids can be back out, the first thing they're going to want to do is meet up with their buddies, um, go, you know, throw uh, disc golf or play basketball or, or just hang out in the park and you guys are going to hang with them. That's exactly what we're going to do, and I am glad to partner with Onslow County Parks and Rec because doing some research after the fact, I have found all these kids had nothing to do before. Now they're all out in town at all the parks, and I said, well, we should be hanging out at the parks. That's so that's exactly what we're going to do. Well, you had one event back in June, your, your kickoff event. We did. And how did it go? What did you think? It was fantastic. We had a great turnout. We had a whole bunch of fun, and it was a very warm day, but we had a lot of fun for the three hours we were out there. Three hours. Three hours. Okay. I, we're friends. They wear you out. Did you get tired? I did. <laughs> <laughs> that means you were having fun. Though. I was having fun, and that was the whole key to the success of that whole thing was fun. Right. Fun activities for everybody. The other thing is, is, it's the idea of letting these young people know that the Onslow County Sheriff's Office and law enforcement are there as their friend and as their support. You're there to protect and to serve, but you're there as a support network as well. Talk a little bit about the response that you received. So the response that we received was incredible because they got to see us at a level to where they don't see us normally. Usually it's in a police car responding to a call or a cry for help or in a uniform. We were just out there as normal people in normal clothes and 
to have the rapport that you can build with those kids and to be a mentor to those kids on that level, they're more responsive to that. And it was a great, great thing. That is incredible. So you do have a few more coming up for the rest of the summer. I know in uh, this month, July is it 13th? It is July 11th. July 11th. July 11th. So it's going to be a Sunday at Steed Park. And we're very excited about that because I'm going to try to have some inflatables out there, many, many activities to do hot dog vendors, you name it, just come out and enjoy. So Steed Park, we should let our viewers know, is our Richlands, um, in the Richlands vicinity. Yes. So the great thing about park and recreation is we have a park in every quadrant, every corner of the county. So whether it's at Onslow Pines or you're at Hubert Bypass, Steed, Deppy, um, so you're in, in all of these different places. So you're coming to Richlands to Steed Park on July 11th, a Sunday. I am and we are. Uh, and you, okay, so you got a contingent coming with you. Oh yes. And again, the times? It is gonna be 1 p.m. To 4 p.m. 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Now, for folks who want to participate, bring their children, their grandchildren to this event, do they need to pre register or just show up? There is no pre registration and there is no cost at all to any taxpayer or any county member. It is just come out and just have fun with law enforcement. Come out, have fun, get to know those folks who are protecting and serving, yes. taking care of us here in Onslow County. And last but not least, how do we learn more? Who do we call and how do we find out? The way that you can learn more is to follow us on Facebook at the Onslow County Sheriff's Office Facebook page. Since we have partnered with Onslow County Parks and Rec, they also have it on their Facebook page. Okay. But our number of 910-455-3113 is on the bottom of this flyer. They will forward you to my voicemail and I will take care of any questions that you may have about the program. Well, Sergeant Seifert, it is a real pleasure to get to talk to you and share this program. And we are looking forward to talking with you again as you kind of come out on the other side of Operation Jumpstart and see what's next. Absolutely. Welcome back to Onslow County today and joining us is not a new friend, but a new face to Onslow County today. Katie Lemaire with Onslow County Peers. Thank you for being here, Katie. Thank you for having me. Katie, we love Peers. Can I just say that? I mean, we love un Peers. <laughs> unabashedly love your mission, what you do for our young families, our young parents, and our and our littles. Mm -hmm. um, and we celebrate what you all do. Thank you. And your biggest celebration of the year is coming up. It is. And tell us what that event is. It is called Unmasking Family, I'm sorry, Unmasking Childhood Trauma. Okay. And this is our fourth annual masquerade ball. So we're very excited. Um, this is our big fundraiser. And you know, we haven't been able to have it like lots of places. And so this is going to be um, spread amongst all, our, all three of our programs this year. So um, we're really excited about it. Well, you know, you all have done some, some of the most fun activities you do. You know, your Bavarian Festival on yeah. the lawn and you know I had the great privilege of going to your masquerade ball two years ago mm -hmm. and we just had a great just a beautiful time but it's hard to imagine that was February yeah. of 2020 yes you know yes. it was you know all Mardi Gras and, and and fun and games and then like the breaks hit yep absolutely um, so talk about what this year's event will look like. Well, we're really excited. We have lots of new games and you know, some of the favorite old ones like Blackjack, everybody loves Blackjack and um, Punching Out, Childhood Trauma is a game and we have um, a photographer there in a, some kind of makeshift background thing so you'll be able to get your picture oh, done. Oh, the cool photo booth. Yeah, the photo booth. It's a little different this year but still such a good one. Um, lots of fun and games. Of course, we have a cash bar and and we have a champagne table that you get to have champagne and um, there'll be prizes and you'll win tickets for your games and it's just going to be so much fun and you get to look fabulous in your formal attire so. which is so much fun because yes. you know 
you get to go to prom when you're a senior in high school and, and then, then the opportunities it. to dress up yep. really kind of go out the window yes and so what a great fun thing so look for a party dress yes. look for your tux or your suit, suit. Mm -hmm. um, now of course you didn't get to have your event in february of 2020 so you all have I mean, February of 21. Well, we did, ha no, we did it January of 21, and okay. then it stopped. We weren't able to do any other ones. And so we've, we're sort of going to come up forward to this event. Yes, So yes. a little bit different that it's in August. It is. Now, we want to know the whens and the wheres and the hows. So it's going to take place August 13th okay. at 6 o'clock um, at the American Legion building on Broadhurst. Okay. Um, same place we've had it. We did have a change in month, so now this is going to be summer, which are, all the women are thrilled because it was always so cold in your formal gown, right. so this will be nice, and um, it's just going to be a blast. We're going to have so much fun. Texas Roadhouse is going to be serving our dinner. Um, we have great desserts and homemade cookies, and it's just going to be a blast. So is your band going to be there this year? The conductors are playing for us the this year. The yes, conductors this year. Okay. Yes, so we're very excited to have them and right. um, it's going to be really fun so we hope everybody can make it and the last thing is if I want to go how do I get a ticket you can come to Piers we're open um, Monday through Thursday 8 to 5 and then on Tuesdays or on Fridays we're open till 2 um, give us a call um, we can run them out to you if you even if you can't make it in we know transportation sometimes is funny during the day so whatever you need us to do we'll do um, we'll take a cash check we do all that debit got credit square. on those little square things yes I'm learning you know <laughs> hard to break out of my comfort zone for that but uh, so we're we're doing it we'll we'll help you in every way you might be able to see our ads up on the billboard so oh, sure. we're really happy about that all right so Friday August 13th Correct. starting at six, six. o'clock mm -hmm. American Legion building wear your best wear your best and don't forget Bring your mask. Bring your mask. Yes. Well, Katie, it is always a pleasure to get to see you Thank and visit you, with you. And um, we look forward to dressing up and cutting a rug. Yeah, with you absolutely. In Thank you so much, Lisa. Good to talk to you. Welcome back to Onslow County today and joining us now is Catherine Mamelli, branch director here at the Richlands branch of the Onslow County Public Library. Catherine, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, Catherine, you've had some changes. The last time we visited was over at the Emergency Operations Center when you were with our health department. Right. And then big career move. You have, you have come back to the library yes, system. I have. Um, and we want to talk about what's going on this summer at our library. Okay. Certainly we all missed last summer in our traditional ways of doing summer reading. So talk to us about this year's theme and how summer reading is going because you guys kicked off a couple of weeks ago and it has been big fun. Yes. So exactly tell what's has. going on. Okay, so this summer we're doing um, Reading Colors, Our World. And so each week um, we're doing, each branch is doing their own separate activities. So you want to make sure and call your branch mm -hmm. um, to see what activities they have. But it all has to do with color. It has to do with reading and, and you know, putting that together. The idea that Reading Colors, Your World, if I'm a preschooler, I am immediately, immediately thinking of a particular big red dog. Yes, like Clifford. Like Clifford. Right. Or a big yellow bird. Like um, Big Bird. Like, exactly. Yeah. So, you know. We're I'm, doing, yeah, so we're doing it a little different too. So we're in, like encouraging new colors, different colors, like aubergine. Yeah, like um, for I know for Richlands, what we're doing is we're, um, bringing in QR codes and having them look at them and like peach you would not think that maybe a light orange would be peach but we're bringing in certain colors for them to sit and think about we're doing crafts that make different colors so that they're not exactly the traditional ones that we would see turquoise um, you know something like that um, I'm a big fan of chartreuse 
Yes, I, yes, love me some of that too. So, so I'm that's a, big a good fan. One. So you know, keep me in mind when you're talking about chartreuse. Okay, but that's just it. We're getting out of our primary color crayon box, mm -hmm. and we're just going for it. Right, even gray. Gray is the color. So we've been talking about what's in between. Oh. Okay, so everything in between, all the colors of the rainbow and beyond, mm -hmm. and beyond. So reading does color our world. It opens our minds to the diversity in the world, you know, and, and the people of the world. Um, and so, and it, it not only colors our world, but it, it brightens it and enlightens it. So I love that that is your theme this year. Yeah, you mentioned calling, um, contacting each of our branches, mm -hmm. and that's the other beautiful thing, is if you need to get to a library, there's one in your neighborhood. Yes, So tell us, tell us where your branches are. So our main branch is at Jacksonville, and then um, our Swansboro branch is out, you know, out that way. Um, past Hubert. Then we have one in Sneeds Ferry, um, you know, where the um, Environmental Services Building is. I get that right. Um, and then Ridgeland's here with you at the museum. So certainly in Sneeds Ferry, we would say that the color of the day there is green. I was going to say green all day. That's our green all day building. Yeah. And certainly here in Ridgeland's at this branch, you know, I also know, Catherine, you all had some days where people could do drive-bys and pick up their books and curbside service, but your patrons, man, they've missed you all. They have. They've been coming back and we're so glad. We're so happy to see people. Uh, we saw one of our, our joint patrons because we share a lot of the same families. Mm -hmm. And I did not recognize this child. She has grown so much yep. in the time that we've been closed. I know it's amazing how much they've changed in just a year of being closed, like you said. They come back and they're taller than me. Well, here they are. I know, they're they are. <laughs> and which yeah. is so exciting. So yes. summer reading is back. Yep. And you guys have got, you know, all of your cool things going on at different branches. But you've also got some new things going on, and what a great service you all are offering to the public now. Yeah. I can't tell you the number of times we get calls and inquiries and say, where can I get something notarized? Right. Tell us about this cool, this wonderful service. So we decided to bring um, notary services to Onslow County Public Library in each branch because it is very difficult. Sometimes you find you have a document that you need to have notarized like that. Not everybody has a bank. Not everybody can get in to do that. Um, sometimes, you know, it's you have to pay for it. So we decided that each branch, we would have one designated person that would be a notary. It's free of charge. All you need to do is just call the branch and you talk to the notary, make an appointment with them. They, you bring in your paperwork and they look at all your documents that you um, that you've got all your you know like your driver's license um, whatever identification that you might need to show the notary they stamp it and you're on your way who better to proofread something than a librarian exactly so that's a perfect connection Catherine for folks who want to know more about summer reading about your services about any of your cool programs because we also in June kicked off you know maker space which right. Matt and I talked about a couple of months ago you've had all this going on how do people find out they can, the best way is to either come in to see us, because we love to talk to everybody and brag about our programs, but if they can't do that or if, we're, if it's after hours, you can always go to our website, which is, you know, onsocountync.gov slash library. Fantastic. So, summer reading's back, programming's back, makerspace is moving along, doing really cool things, yeah. um, and now notary service on top of all of the wonderful resources. It's summertime, and if we've got a chance to break away and go to the beach or go on vacation, we need to also pick up some summer reading for adults as well. Yeah, and we have the program. All you have to do is register online, and you get badges. You get fun, cool prizes just for reading. So each week, you know, the more that you read, the more you, you win. So you're rewarded for having fun and reading. So <laughs> Which is in the reward itself is the yeah. adventures of a new book. Exactly. Well, Catherine, it is always a pleasure to talk with you, whether yes, it was at the health department, 
And now, right here in our own backyard here at the library, we're neighbors. We're neighbors now. So thank you so much for coming in and sharing this with us. And we look forward to our next great read. Thank you so much, Lisa. Welcome back to Onslow County today. And joining us now is Melissa Huffman with Onslow County Cooperative Extension. Melissa, welcome back. Thank you very much for having me. I'm already going to tell you how much I love your shirt, right? Well, thank you. No, I'm a Wolfpack shirt. Diehard Wolfpack. You can't help <laughs> it. And of course, we all know how inextricably tied the university is to what you all do at Cooperative Extension. Yes. You are just parts of a whole. Very much. And you get to be part of two worlds because not only are you part of the university and the state system, but also part of the county. That's right. So you, you all help our community from a number of different avenues. That's right, very much. So during COVID, We've missed seeing each other. We've not had a chance to really do very many public events. Right. You've spent the last year doing some cool virtual events. Lots of virtual events, yes. But it's time to get back out there. And you all are bringing back what I think was one of the most fun, best received events I have seen in a long time. Tell us about Farm to fork. So I'm really excited. Yes, we did not have farm to fork last year, but we're going to do farm to fork. It's a brunch this year, um, and it's a, basically a fundraiser. So what we want to do is educate citizens, people that are attending the event, about local foods and local agriculture to Onslow County specifically. Okay. Um, and it's a good opportunity. A lot of people are so far removed from a farm that maybe we can take that moment to educate them a little bit about what's available here. So when I ask kids who visit me here at the museum, where does your food come from? And they say, the grocery store. No. Oh no. We're missing a step. Just, yeah, a, a really big one. Not even a small one, but a really big one. The, the jump it off step. Yes. And so this is really to educate people about where their food comes from. That's right. Now, you know, and, and even here in Onslow County, which was historically and traditionally an agricultural community, right. we sometimes don't think of it as that. We think, oh, well, certainly we have a lot of tourism, and mm -hmm. certainly we have our, our support. We have the United States federal government here, and the Marine Corps, and the mm -hmm. Navy, and, and our services, you know, our armed forces, which is so much a part of who we are. That's right. But we are still very much tied to the land, aren't we, Melissa? We are very much tied to the land. And that's something that I always want to promote and advocate for because people that are maybe new to the area don't realize there is the military here, and that's a big part of our county. Get outside of the county a little bit, and it's a totally different world. So I will tell you, you know, this is my favorite time of year. I don't mind the heat, and I love driving around and seeing how happy right now the crops are. Yes. Now that is your job. Explain to our viewers your actual, okay. your real job with Cooperative Extension. Besides scheduling brunches, right? Besides <laughs> scheduling brunches. And um, so I work through NC State and Onslow County Government. I work with the farmers in the county, specifically with field crops. So corn, soybeans, cotton, tobacco, and wheat. I also work with people that have livestock, so not just commercial producers, but people that have a backyard goats or horses and things like that. So we're basically um, an educational facility. People have questions. They have questions about pasture management, how to improve their soil and their pastures, their fields, anything like that. They would contact me. Well, right now, and I mean, I'm not a farmer, Melissa, but the corn looks really pretty happy. Now that we've got some rain, right. yes, there for a little bit. Uh, it was kind of struggling, but that rain that we've got is, is really pumping it up. So, and I've seen more tobacco this year. Mm -hmm. Everything is flower, you know, the, the flowers are out. Mm -hmm. I, I will tell you that I once had visitors come to the museum and said, I don't know what that crop is, but those flowers sure are pretty. <laughs> and so we've got, you know, th that starting. Um, Soybeans are rocking and rolling. Um, how's cotton? Are we a little bit early for cotton? Still, cotton's in the ground now. Okay. People probably don't 
know exactly what it looks like. Of course, you'll see it when it starts to put the flowers on. Um, but we do have quite a bit of cotton in the area as well. Okay. Well, we are. We are. We are part of of really that agricultural heart of Eastern mm -hmm. North Carolina, and Farm to Fork is a terrific way to yeah. learn more about that. Let's talk about specifically when, where, and how I can participate. Okay. So. Tickets are on sale now. Okay. At, they're through the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Office here in Onslow County. Um, you can call our office, 910-455-5873, uh, and it's going to be on August 28th at 10 a.m. Okay, and that's a Saturday? That's a Saturday. It's going to be out at Mike's Farm, and tickets need to be purchased in advance. All right, so we purchase our ticket in advance. Um, do we know the price? Have Tickets are $40 a piece okay. because it is a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I probably should mention that as well. The money that we're raising from this is going to go towards youth agriculture programs within the county. Awesome. So in the spring, we do a big two-day event for second and third graders out at a local farm. Kids will have stations that they can go to, learn about different agriculture within the county, um, as well as many environmental issues as well. And then from that, they'll take home book bags full of information um, and products that they can take home to their family and share with them as well. Well, you know, I know that and you and I have talked a little bit um, in the last year, you know, the, right. of COVID about just how families have started their own gardens. Yes. And knowing a little bit more, you know, what it's like to grow your own tomato. Mm -hmm. And it sure does taste good. It does taste. It tastes you, better when you when you grow it at home, for sure. When you grow it at home. So this is a great way to introduce kids to that feeling and that experience. Um, so this is a fundraiser for your programs. $40 a person. Brunch, Saturday, August 28th at Mike's Farm. Purchase tickets in advance. Um, I'm sure space is limited somewhat. Yes. Yes. So got to make sure we get them early. Please do. Yes. It well, sells out quick. Every year it's sold out. Uh, and elbow to elbow and great food. Yes. I mean, it was such a great variety when, when I was able to attend year before last. So looking forward to it. Melissa, um, if you were to leave our viewers with one thought about agriculture and the story of farmers, I know you worked very closely with our farmers to make sure that they and, and all of the folks who work with and for them were safe this year. Talk about what it means to you to take care of our farmers. Mm -hmm. Ugh, that's a really emotional thing because I'm so tied to the farmers and I have a lot of pride for our farmers within the county because, I mean, it's true, they feed us every day. And, you know, through everything with the COVID, it puts a strain on them, and a lot of people don't see that. So if you see a farmer, if you see a tractor going down the road, please take the time and wave at them, move off to the side, kind of move out of their way a little bit, because they're doing a job as well, and they're trying to provide food for our citizens. So. Well, that is fantastic. Melissa Huffman, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for sharing that. And we'll see you at Farm to Fork. Definitely. Can't wait. Welcome back to Onslow County today, and we've shifted the scene a little bit here, and we're welcoming a guest, Chance Hellman, from the museum. Well, thank you for having me. Well, thank you, actually, for inviting us in. This is our home away from home, right, Chance? It is, yeah. I think we're here more than we are at home a lot of times, which yeah. is awesome, <laughs> uh, because we're back, Chance. It's nice to be back, yeah. Um, you and, and our team here from the museum, we've been as part of our COVID response team. And fortunately, about a month ago, we were able to reopen our doors to our visitors, which has been fantastic, which means we finally got to share this exhibit with our public. Tell us a little bit about where we are today. So uh, we got this exhibit um, you know, six, seven months ago from the Museum of History in Raleigh uh, as a way to talk about the anniversary of the first Gulf War. Uh, it was such an impact on the community here. Um, and, and then we left. 
and we closed down because of the pandemic. And so people didn't really get a chance to see it. So now that we're back, we're really trying to encourage uh, folks to come out and, and see their story because this is their story in a lot of ways. Um, and, and they can share with us too some of the, the things that they found impactful from that. You know, the generosity of the Museum of History as well, this was to be returned and an email got sent and they said, absolutely, please keep it, extend it. And so how long will it be here? So we'll have this up through the month of uh, September. At the end of September, this will go back to its home. Now, we also augmented their exhibit, supplemented it, with some things that you were able to collect from the community. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that they'll see. Sure. So we had some items already in our permanent collection, and then we were able to get items on loan um, from some very gracious community members, uh, folks who had served, folks who were here who had pictures, they had um, uh, bits and pieces of uniforms, they had uh, money from Kuwait, uh, just different things that helped tell that story and, and how it affected the people that were living here in Onslow County or deployed from here in Onslow County. And, you know, we talk about this being the first Gulf War, so we're talking about, you know, the, the 90s for, for these families. People might not think of that as history. We typically think about the museum as that must be old stuff, right? Talk about how important it is to collect what we call recent history. Sure, so this is a form of active collecting that helps us um, it helps us tell this story in the future. So we're telling it now, but 50 years from now, these are gonna be important artifacts. And we'd like to, to get people thinking about what's important to them, because that's going to be important to us as, uh, as museum professionals in the future. It's gonna help other research historians. It's gonna help folks understand what happened here. Well, you know, we sort of took that same approach when we did an exhibit on healthcare um, a couple of years ago, we did an exhibit on healthcare, and we talked about the 1918 epidemic, pandemic, influenza um, pandemic, and here we are in 2021, and we're also collecting things to help us tell stories about COVID-19 and its impact on our community. Um, talk with us a little bit about what you're seeing come in and what we want to, to open the door to. Sure, so one of the, the major things that people think about is, of course, masks. And in the very beginning of this pandemic, that wasn't something you were buying. A lot of people made them at home, especially reusable masks. And so we'd like people to, to bring those kinds of things that help tell the story of how this whole pandemic has evolved and how our response to it has evolved. Um, but photographs, a lot of children made art. They painted things about uh, thanking our healthcare workers and our first responders. Um, and then also people's stories, their, uh, their remembrances of, of what happened things that closed down, places they couldn't go, things that they used to do. A lot of high school students missed prom. They missed sporting events. Um, they missed their friends. And so a lot of these are stories that will help for, uh, in the future, help historians tell that story. Um, you know, when we did the healthcare exhibit, we didn't have a whole lot of information about how the pandemic affected us, the Spanish flu pandemic affected us in Onslow County. And I'd like to make it different for the next research historian, the next museum curator who wants to tell this story in 100 years. We should have all of that there. So you can go on our website and we have a, an actively uh, kind of moving collection called Remembering Coronavirus, and you can submit your stories, you can submit pictures, you can send us, um, you know, artifacts, as it were. So hopefully we can we can have a better collection when, when we get to that point. So 50 and 100 years from now, when we, when, when we chance, because we'll still be here. 50, right. <laughs> um, but when that story is told, they'll have that those resources to draw from. Mm -hmm, exactly. So we're, we're going to shift gears completely. Last year, of course, um, we always have a really, this gallery is usually neon practically because this is our kids' discovery gallery and it's wide open and loud. And we were unable to have our exhibit um, about space. Um, and so we were very excited to get back this summer and create our kids' discovery exhibit. But once again, we're gonna do things a little differently around here. Talk to us about Welcome to the Jungle. 
Sure, so we chose to focus on the Amazon jungle, uh, the Amazon basin, and we're doing it outside. So I think that's kind of fitting in the sense that it's like a jungle out there now with the humidity of the summer. Um, but it also gives us the space that we need. Um, we're still practicing that social distancing, trying to keep people comfortable, right? We want them to be to feel comfortable and safe when they're, they're enjoying our programming. So we're gonna do all of that outside in our outdoor learning center. Now, I have to tell folks, we, we were helping with COVID, but we were starting to talk about this. And every day, you and our coworker, Emily and I, somebody would come to the table with a new Amazon fact. And we have now fancy ourselves quite the experts without scaring anybody. Because <laughs> we're talking jaguars and anacondas and capybaras. What's the favorite thing you've learned so far? Oh, my favorite thing uh, is probably that the capybara is autophagous, which means that it consumes its own feces to digest gut bacteria that helps it consume and break down the plant matter that it eats. And I find that disgusting and fascinating at the same time. And who will love that more than little kids? Uh, their dads. Maybe their dads. <laughs> but why don't you know those are one of those things. Now, we got to tell people that a capybara, although it's as big as a dog, it's a big really? rat. It's a big rat. Right? Yeah. So jaguars, capybara, tapers, which we also learned some cool stuff about. All of those cool factoids are in Welcome to the Jungle. And so that exhibit's open now, July. We've kicked it off. What do you think is the best part about exploring the Amazon? Um, I think the best part is, for me personally, raising awareness about the plight of the Amazon. Deforestation and pollution are probably the most significant impacts um, for us as a people around the world because of how important the Amazon is to climate. Um, and I think hopefully people will, will have a better understanding of what's going on. Maybe we can't do much from here, but we can certainly talk about it and getting the conversation started is important. Well, you know, as we say, thousands and thousands of miles in that Amazon basin is a rainforest, a rainforest that creates oxygen mm -hmm. that we all get to breathe. And so, as you say, there might be some cool capybara gross factoids, but if that's all interlaced with the story of caring for those cool creatures, all the better. Chance, it is always fun talking with you. We always learn something new. Um, so get on your khaki and head out to the jungle, right? Yeah, so let's explore. Now, if we're going to explore, we need to know where we are. So can you share with our viewers how to find out about the museum, how to reach us on Facebook or our website, and what our address is? Sure. So physically, we're here at 301 South Wilmington Street in Richland, so just across from Town Hall. But you can find us on our website, Onslow County Museum, uh, or onslowcountync.gov backslash museum. And of course, on Facebook, where you can find out about all of our events, just search for Onslow County Museum. Well, Chance... I'll see you in the Amazon. Sounds exciting. Welcome back to Onslow County today. And joining us now is Emily Baker, our education coordinator here at the Onslow County Museum. Emily, welcome back. Thank you. And I have Good to, to say you. welcome back in so many ways because for about the last <laughs> year, we've been gone. We have. Uh, we yeah. did some great, you did some awesome virtual programming um, for our kiddos last summer, mm -hmm. but we, it's not the same. Not the same, no. And you were with us as part of our COVID response team, but about a month ago. We came back. It's we came exciting. Back. <laughs> we opened the doors to our public, mm -hmm. and so we're getting ready. We're doing our summer program, but slightly modified this year. Um, so it, we're tying it to our children's discovery exhibit. Yep. And tell us a little bit about Welcome to the Jungle. 
So um, since we can't do like our traditional summer art program, we're going to be doing still something fun, interactive with the kids. It's just going to be a little bit different. Um, but starting July 7, so that first week, um, either a Wednesday or Friday, so they can either come the 7th or the 9th, um, they're going to be doing something related to the Amazon. So some kind of activity, craft, and each week, so they can come each week, it's going to be something different. Um, it's from 9 to 11, and they can pop in any time during that time and create some fun, cool, colorful things relating to the Amazon. Now, we talked a little bit about, uh, with Chance earlier, about what, how we have spent the last couple of months thinking that we are ready to be on Nat Geo. We have learned so much about the Amazon and the rainforest and all these cool creatures. Very cool creatures. Now, yeah. Emily, you know that Chance shared that Capybara story. <laughs> of course, yeah. What is your favorite creature? What's your favorite oh, Amazon fact that you've learned? Okay. There are some crazy creatures in the Amazon, lots of different ones, very interesting creatures. Probably, I don't know if it's my favorite now, uh, but very interesting would be the sloth. Okay. So, didn't know about the sloth until I really started reading about them, is about the algae that grows in their fur and how there is this relationship with these moths. And, and you know, they just kind of hang out and they feed off of each other and algae grows in the fur and these moths then feed on the algae that's growing on the sloth and it's, it's this a weird real. relationship, but it works. It's a symbiotic relationship <laughs> yes. for sure. It's sort of in slow motion. Very slow. <laughs> in slow motion. Very slow. And, and you know, our kiddos, I mean, we know that they love sloth. Of course, yeah. But, yeah. My goodness, there are still so many creatures, and I think that that's the thing we've talked about, mm -hmm. too, that have yet to be discovered. Very true. All kinds of creatures that just haven't been found yet just because of the Amazon in general and, and the brush and the trees and the vines and you know we have the river and it's just it's a magical place a dangerous place but all kinds of things that have yet to be found and we're bringing part of it right here just, to yes to just a little part. bit <laughs> now um, you mentioned Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesday and Fridays. All of July, most of August. Yes, ma'am. Um, is there an age limit? I would say school age. Um, you know, if you have a three-year-old and you have a six-year-old and a ten-year-old, I think they can all come. You know, that three-year-old might need a little bit of help, but I think all ages would enjoy the different crafts and activities that we've got planned for them. And then what about registration or fees? So all of that information we're going to have up on our website. So you can just type in Onslow County Museum. Um, all of that will be up there or even on our Facebook page. We'll have all of that information. Any of the other details about what each theme week is going to be will be up there. So I would say check that out. Okay, and cost to attend? No cost, it is free, so yeah. come on. <laughs> so it's free, really kind of all ages. We are limiting the size, so we do right. wanna do some registration, and again, that's gonna be on our Facebook, but we wanna make sure that it's, we have a manageable group and that everybody gets that real oh, yeah. great attention. Yes, ma'am. So last but not least, Miss Emily, what have you missed most about our kiddos? Oh. I would say just seeing them, just seeing their little faces and them getting so excited. You know, looking at them through the computer screen is just not the same, but having them there, you see them and just feeding off of their energy and, you know, reading them is the best. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, they are looking forward <laughs> to seeing you too, I know. Well, Miss Emily, thank you. And we look forward to our Amazonian adventure. We thank you for joining us for Onslow County today, and a special thank you to all of our guests. Coronavirus, COVID-19 is waning. We're getting out and about. And in this 21st year of Onslow County today, we, as always, invite you to get out and explore 
here on Slow County today.